Our next roaster very cleverly came dressed as one of the characters from James's films. Here he is, dressed as the hot air balloon from Oz the Great and Powerful, <laughs> Jeffrey Ross. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you, James. Wow! How you guys doing? I love it. What an epic night. First off, I'd like to thank my niece, Seth Rogen, for hosting. Oh, man. I saw your mall cop movie. What was it called? Observant Report. Yeah. <laughs> It made me realize how funny Kevin James is. <laughs> how many people saw This Is The End? Awesome movie. I loved all you guys in This Is The End. I really did. You played yourselves. That was so cool. How'd you guys get in a character on set? Did they pass out smoothies that taste like Judd Apatow's asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these fat guys laughing, I love it. And this is the end, Jonah Hill gets raped by a demon with a big black <laughs> The didn't have to be big or black, but you know Jonah with his demands. Uh, Actually, Jonah almost couldn't make it tonight because he had trouble finding a tuxedo that changes sizes every three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, you're an amazing talent. I love you as a Ku Klux Klan guy in Django Unchained. What? That was a great role. You should wear a sheet over your face in every movie. <laughs> what was that, a California king? <laughs> <laughs> when Jonah's agent told him that Quentin Tarantino wanted him to be in a spaghetti western, Jonah was like, you had me at spaghetti. <laughs> Jonah Hill! Uh, Jonah Hill! <laughs> What's that? Spaghetti western. Spaghetti western, you like that? <laughs> oh my God. I love you, Jonah, you're a good guy. I I love you, dude. Great to see Sarah Silverman. She's the greatest. So funny tonight. You're like a sister to me. I'm so proud of you, Sarah, for your success in the animated movie. Anybody see Wreck-It Ralph? Wow. Which is what guys do to your p They wreck it, then they Ralph. Bill Hader, holy mackerel, so hilarious. That was great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Too bad you can't do an impression of a guy with two equally sized eyes. Oh. <laughs> Man, look at that, get a close up. <laughs> I've heard of a lazy eye, but that left one's collecting unemployment. <laughs> Aziz, I wanted to make some jokes about you bombing tonight, but you were so goddamn funny, I can't, and, uh... I mean, seriously, Aziz, you are hilarious. <laughs> Aziz has been charming audiences and snakes for years. <laughs> I guess you're here tonight because now that Kanye had a real baby, he doesn't need you anymore. Oh. How you doing, Franco? You look like Johnny Depp with lupus. Oh. Does Ryan Gosling ever call you, start laughing, and then hang up? <laughs> Franco is half Italian and half asleep. <laughs> How about a hand for James's grandma, 91 years old? Beautiful.
127 hours is how long she has left. Get him, Grandma. Get him. Get him. Yeah. Oh, Franco. Franco comes from humble beginnings, right? Your first job is working at McDonald's. It's the last time anybody ever said about your work, I'm loving it. And because you're an academic, I treated this roast like a research project. I watched all your films, I read your poetry, I even have one of your paintings hanging in my fire pit. <laughs> you know, Franco, personally, I don't care if you f guys or f girls. All I know is you f me out of 12 bucks when I went to see that Wizard of Oz movie. <laughs> the whole time I was in the theater, I was thinking, there's no place like home. <laughs> But Franco, I'm really looking forward to you mumbling your rebuttal at the end of the show. Uh, Are you ready to bring it, Franco? Let's hope you... That's good. I'm psyched. Let's hope you bring some of that razor-sharp wit you brought to the Oscars. You were a worse host than the AIDS monkey. Face it, Franco, you and Anne Hathaway had the comedic chemistry of Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. <laughs> anyway, Franco, I really do admire you because you're a creative risk taker during a time when the world needs more of that. So I wish you continued success and I hope I wasn't too mean tonight because my girlfriend and I both want to f you after the show. All right, good luck, buddy. All right, it is time for the man of the hour. Get ready. Are you ready? He's been sitting here for hours squirming, waiting for this to end. So now he knows how we feel when we watch one of his piece of shit independent movies. Please welcome up my good buddy, James Franco. James Franco. I do think this, this is truly my punishment for the Oscars. <laughs> America and the rest of the world can have a cathartic moment after this airs. And I want to thank everybody here. Thank you for coming. I had no idea what you're going to be into. And Jonah, thank you most of all. I, when you said yes, I didn't know that you were going to be <laughs> listening to these jokes. For <laughs> I had no idea what a friend you are. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Jonah. Thank you. I agreed to do this roast because I really wanted to do something I'd never done before. Something that has zero artistic value. Something nobody will remember three months from now. Something that's offensive, homophobic, stars horrifically untalented people. And something that's only a big deal to a handful of teenage stoners on Twitter. Now you might say, but James, didn't you just describe your highness? <laughs> I wouldn't know, I didn't see your highness. <laughs> and you know why I didn't see your highness? Because I was too busy working, creating, writing poetry, painting, making independent films, and building psychosexual edible birdhouses. <laughs> and despite all of my amazing, inspiring work, I've had to sit here, listen to you guys launch vicious attacks at me, and all of them are completely unfounded. You're gonna say I sucked at the Oscars. I was a genius at the Oscars. That was experimental tuxedo sleep art. 